well we're back in Accra and uh, I am exhausted as usual when I finish these mission trips I uh, thank God this has been a very productive and and rewarding trip the students that I that came on the trip gelled together nicely uh, they really work together and it's one of the very important aspects of, of the trip and so this is our last day in Accra and we've had a great trip we uh, started off in Accra and it's always great to bring the students to Accra to first of all experience the culture here and especially the the vibrancy of the church the vibrancy of Christianity and whilst you know a large part of the Western world is is declining and uh, in terms of the Christian presence and activity and vibrancy. Um, there are many cities like Accra that is just bustling and just burgeoning and overflowing and flourishing with the, the presence of God, the presence of Christianity. And that is one of the things I think that Africa has a lot to teach the West and the reason why I bring my students here is for them to experience the church life here and so um, it was interesting because just a day after they came they were literally um, sort of baptized into the churches and they were preaching and, and teaching the day after they came because it would be, they came on a Saturday. And so we went to the charismatic evangelistic ministry and um, at the overseer there, Steve Mensah, a very good friend of mine, and it was, it was wonderful just seeing the students um, teaching and, and preaching and sharing there and, and singing, you know, um, it was a wonderful time. Because it's important for them not only to be observing but also to be involved in ministry itself. And I think that's a, an important part of the mission trip. Um, another very important part of the trip, looking back, was the experiences at the two orphanages that we visited. One was the Osu Children's Home, and just seeing the students um, working with the children and loving on them, and even a couple of the students sign, signing up to, um, to sponsor a couple of the children there. It was the children there, it was wonderful to um, allow the students to be actively serving and to be teaching the children and, uh, and to be just getting a different experience of the level of need and there was a number of children that were abandoned by their parents or left in the hospital um, left outside on the floor and uh, seeing them now in the home and growing and flourishing it's, it's always encouraging to see to see that and um, there is great need here and great opportunity for service going to Tamale is usually the highlight of the trip and I've been coming to Ghana for, um, for, for about four years now in terms of mission trips from Regent University with my students and Tamale is usually the high point Tamale is just a contrast from Accra, um, unlike Accra, which is predominantly Christian, churches everywhere, and Islam has a very low profile here. Um, Tamale is completely different. Tamale, um, which is about a thousand miles north, is um, predominantly Muslim and traditional religion, and with Christianity being a, a small proportion of that um, population. And so things are a lot more sensitive, Christianly, uh, and sharing our faith. I think it's important for, m for me to get my students to understand the sensitivities and the cultural nuances that are, that are involved in sharing Christ in a context that is um, predominantly Muslim. And the way that works in, our, in, in Ghana is 
you know, when we move to Tamale, we have to, the first thing we have to do is to see the, the, the chief of Tamale, who is a Muslim. And the protocol demands really that we have to see the chief because in Africa, if anyone comes into your jurisdiction, they need to come with your permission. And certainly, if you're going to have a Christian campaign, um, the chief needs to be aware. There's also the safety aspect too, because if the if anything happens, um, if we are attacked or a group of radical Muslims decides to close our campaign down and remove our speakers or what have you, um, if the chief's aware and is given our permission to be there, that just cannot happen. And so, um, whilst we were there, it was great just um, being with the chief and and even asked us to pray with him, to pray for him and for the students also to understand the importance of, of protocol and respect even if you know, it's from a different uh, religion. For me, I think it's important that um, having a campaign, and it's, it's quite, I must say, audacious of us, but it's a part of the Great Commission that we are called to preach the gospel and I think even if it's in a a staunchly Islamic context, we're still called to preach the gospel and, and there are risks involved and we follow protocol but to be able to have a Christian campaign and to declare Jesus at the heart of a Islamic location um, for me it's important that we do it respectfully but we do it nonetheless um, forcefully and declare that Jesus is Lord Somebody shout his name! Somebody shout his name! Let the demons hear you shout his name! Let the devils hear you shout his name! And so having a gospel campaign in, in, in Tamale, which is predominantly Muslim and traditional religion, is an important part of the trip. And it, it has its challenges in terms of um, just the spiritual warfare and the healings and sickness and poverty and everything else which is a part of it that is challenging so it's important that we pray about it and we seek the Lord for guidance and we've seen great things we've seen great miracles we've seen and not scores of Muslims who came to Jesus which is always a very powerful part of the trip visiting the village um, and seeing what, what, it, what is it like to live in a village? One of the first things that strikes you when you go to a village is how dark it is. And um, that's just a reality. When you live in a village, often there's no electricity. And so uh, in the nighttime it's dark. But yet, when we went to the village and we, um, the villagers came out and to greet us, because we were literally going to stay that night in a mud hut. morning um, that we went down to the the river to, to fetch water because that's what they do every morning fetch water and I had to carry on you know a, one of those basins uh, of water on my head and I tell you it was really heavy and they walked for a mile or so um, every single morning to fetch water sometimes twice a day or three times a day and it's good for the students to see um, just the privileges that they enjoy by just expecting water and electricity each day without even thinking about it. What I love about Ghana is just the vibrancy of the culture, the dynamism, the excitement, the people, the just the, just the way the culture is and um, the markets and uh, the congestion and just the life of the city 
and um, it's something in which you, when you first get here it's quite annoying but after a while you just get used to it, it becomes a part of you um, it becomes a part of your, expect, your experience and um, people are so friendly people are so open and so ready to receive um, guests and visitors and one of the things that is so interesting is people talk to each other people talk for a long time they sit and they converse and they have time and that's something I miss being in the West My desire really that the impact would first of all be on my students and that they themselves will understand the way God works in different cultures and contexts and move away from thinking that you know the way we do things in the US or the UK is the way the rest of the world um, experience God and for them to experience the Lord and, and, and Christianity in a completely different context and lastly we want to also be a blessing to the church here in Tamale, a church that is often neglected and churches that are often neglected um, and be of support to the pastors which is why we have a pastors um, leadership conference. Um.